On November 18, Committee on Foreign Relations of United States Senate published a report entitled The United States and the Europe, a concrete agenda for transatlantic cooperation on China to be prepared to work with United States trusted allies to counter China's autocratic regime that increasingly become economic, political and security challenges. The report highlighted that United States and Europe must work together to defend democratic principles and confront the China's attempts to undermine rule of law, prosperity and global security. The report has detailed agenda for collaboration in six key areas, including funding of China's malign political influences, protecting confronting the security implications of the PRC's strategic investment in energy, transport, and the digital infrastructure through One Belt, One Road, and the invigorating partnerships in Africa and the Indo-Pacific. Researcher at Uyghur Research Institute, Rukia Turdos, emphasized the significance of the report. The United States enacted legislation on China's human rights abuses in Hong Kong and East Turkestan, also about investment screening and export controls. And the international interparliamentary alliances on China are also working towards how to stop China's ongoing genocide in East Turkestan, as well as how to confront China's extreme bad influences in overseas. The agenda published by the Committee on Foreign Relations of the United States Senate is the significant sign of all these growing agreements on China into a, a detailed plan and it's a signal of collective action. The head of the exiled Tibetan government, Lapsing Sangai, visited the White House on November 19. His government was not recognized by the U.S. government in prior years. This is the first time the exiled Tibetan government is invited to the White House after six decades. This historic meeting for Tibetans could be seen as an acknowledgement of Central Tibetan administration. The Prime Minister of the East Turkestan government in exile congratulated the leaders of the Tibetan exile government for their meeting with U.S. Special Coordinator for Tibetans, Robert Destro. He also hoped U.S. government to recognize the aspiration of independence of people of East Turkestan. On behalf of the East Turkestan government in exile, we would like to congratulate Dr. Lobsang Sangai, the president of the Tibetan government in exile, in their historic meeting with the White House. We urge the White House and the U.S. government to meet with the East Turkestan government in exile and to acknowledge our people's aspirations to restore East Turkestan's independence. The United States will cut the number of its troops deployed in Afghanistan from 5,000 to 2,500 by mid-January next year. Director of Kabul-based think tank Afghan Research and Evaluation Unit Nishant Motwani told South China Morning Post that pulling out U.S. troops will create more vacuum for terrorist groups angered by China's treatment on Muslims in East Turkestan. However, researcher at Uyghur Research Institute Nijat Turgon said it's not clear that withdrawal of U.S. troops will create gaps. He said it's not clear Taliban may create any trouble for China to help Uyghur Muslims. Well, I think that the withdrawal of U.S. troops in Afghanistan will speed up the tension between the Taliban and the Afghan government, and it also create a security vacuum which entails great powers to enter in Afghanistan. In my view, China firstly to keep maintaining the good relationship both with Afghanistan, Afghan government and the Taliban, and then China will also try to the, fill the gap by strengthening its influence in Afghanistan by using its economic and political powers. But the Taliban and Afghan government should be aware of the China's intervention will be different from the others. China's occupation in the East Turkestan can be a good lesson for the Taliban and Afghan government. Canada's ambassador to the United Nations, Bob Ray, called United Nations to investigate China's ongoing genocide in East Turkestan. To urge investigate the accusation of China's ongoing genocide, including forced labor, rape, and forced sterilization, 
International parliamentarians also sent a letter to UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, urging him to leverage the international organization's investigative and political mechanisms. The letter is led by U.S. Congressman Ted S. Yahoo and is supported by parliamentarians from Canada, Australia, the European Union, Switzerland, and Italy.